How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Built for Anything podcast. I'm your host, Hertz. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to it. And today I got a really great show lined up for you guys. I got sitting with me, Alex Williams. He is a personal trainer, health enthusiast, entrepreneur, and he has a tremendous, tremendous backstory into how he turned his life around and became a business owner. And I really think you guys could take a lot of value from this podcast today. So if you enjoy it, please do leave a comment down below. It really does help uh, the show. Share it with your friends, family members, whoever you feel could benefit from it. And without further ado, Alex Williams. Got my guy right here, man, Alex Williams. Welcome to the Bill for Anything podcast, man. Appreciate you being here, bro. I appreciate it. I truly, truly appreciate you having me here, man. No problem, man. No problem. Dude, you got a you got a very interesting story, man, that I'm sure a lot of people could benefit from. Yeah. Uh, but first, you know, I got I got to start from the beginning. I got to talk about how this even happened. Right. Like, how did we even meet in the first place? Right. It all started with a with a camera. Cam- eBay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got social. You got so many social media these days. You got Instagram, Facebook. Snapchat, but we met through eBay. eBay, right? Oh, yeah, Amazon, it was eBay? eBay. Yeah, okay, it was eBay. eBay. So you can't even see the picture of the person. You don't even know who you're dealing with, but that's crazy. But we're here now, so yeah, man. It was, it was, it was, it was quite ironic, man. But I tell you, um, in going out there and meeting with you, right, uh-huh. and seeing the gym, because that's it, personal trainer, trainer exactly. right? We're gonna definitely talk about that. Um, but dude, meeting with you, man, I loved your vibe. I loved your energy. I told you in the moment, man. I was like, man, I like what you're doing. Um, you know, I'd be more than happy to, you know, let you, you know, take this camera, do what you need to do with it. Um, we shot some footage of the gym, man. So I definitely appreciate it. And we just kind of kept in touch ever since then, man. Yes, sir. And, uh, you helped me in terms of, um, the shirts that I, that I dropped not too long ago. You, Mm -hmm. you linked me up with, uh, the people in order to do that. So I appreciate you for doing that. Yeah, no problem. I know a lot of people don't really like sharing, sharing, uh, you know what I mean? The connect. (laughs) It's all good, man. At the end of the day, you know, I want everybody to be successful. That's what life is about because we we, uh, shit, we live and we die. So this, you only got two things to do in life. So I read that for my people to live, then, you know, try not to get where they're going and, you know, can't accomplish their goals and, you know, just dying, not having that feeling. So, uh, you know, my, my main thing for people is, you know, be successful and give it all you got, you know. If you got to talk to somebody, get every resource you can, uh, no matter what you got to do, just just try to get the job done. So, and, uh, you know, we all hit humps and bruises. We all get stuck sometimes and we always need a way out. So, uh, you know, I think that way it just teach people how to open their mouth more and reach out to people because uh, you never know who who be willing to give you their plugs or show you their ideas, you know. So. Uh, that's the main thing with that though. So I'm happy you got yours in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nah, man, I appreciate that, man. And, and you said some, you said some powerful things there, man. I mean, life is, life is tough. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. And and people, especially people at a certain position, man, they don't really like to share, you know, the ideas and how they got there, right? Like most people, they get there and it's like. I right, man, you know, kind of like the crabs in the barrel See, type of I, thing. Like, all right, man, you got to figure it out on your yeah, own, Yeah, I got this my way. Exactly. So yeah, Good luck. Yeah. And it's like, we're not going to get nowhere with that kind it. of mentality. You at see the end, what I'm saying? You got to have a hustle at the end of the day. You can give anybody any resource, but at the end of the day, you got to have a hustle. You got to have a, uh, the mindset and the motivation to go with that. Uh, anybody can give you anything, but people won't use it, you know. Uh, I know if if somebody was to give you fifteen twenty thousand right now, what would you do with it? You probably blow it and don't have it coming in. So um, I think they teach you the value of it. You know how to appreciate it more when you work for it and you you find it because you you waking up every day just trying to find that resource that 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 thing that you stuck at. You know you're trying to get over that hump. So once you do find it, you're like, oh, I'm not going back. You know I, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I think, it, you know, it just teach you how to appreciate it more. You know what I'm saying? It, it mm-hmm. teach you the, the true value of hard work. No, I agree. And you're into, you're into a couple of things, man. Um, I, obviously, man, you're working out. You look in great shape, bro. Appreciate it. You know it. what I mean? You look in great <laughs> I, shape. I truly appreciate um, it. Talk to me. Like, how would you summarize, you know, what it is that you're into? Like, how, how do you categorize Alex Williams? Ah, oh, man. I really just say a business, man. You know, uh. Ever since I had the vision of, or well, my dad, he started his business maybe 1920. Uh, what people don't fail to realize, uh, he taught me how to be a businessman. He started me at the age of four working with his business. He had an 18, uh, 18 wheeler tire business where he went out, changed 18 wheelers. He 
opened up his own tire shop right in Dallas. Uh, right when I was probably about five years old. Every day, every summer, I go up there and help him at his shop. Uh, he built the basketball goal in his garage, so he got a warehouse full of tires with a basketball goal up there, and he just taught me how to go up there and hoop. If I wasn't hooping at the time, I'd be working with him. So it's you know my mindset was pretty focused at the time. I seen how he made money, how he woke up every day. And the late nights he came home and just showed me the true value of it. Um, and, you know, he went through his mistakes and everything. And it taught me the way of business, you know, just trying to depend on your friends. Because uh, once his business got successful, he started renting and out trying to help people under him. You know, close friends, family members, people that still in the streets uh, that respected him. So he pretty much just trying to keep his name up. And uh, not knowing it's hurting our family, our household at the time, me and my two brothers and my mom, uh, it was killing us because these people taking the time away from them, the money. And uh, just to try to keep your name up, people don't know what you got to go through. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people try to keep their name up these days. So they do stuff, they buy stuff, materialistic stuff just to keep up. But at the end of the day, man, you got to do what's best for you and uh, just keep going because it come hunt you like it did my dad. At the end of the day, I think when I turned 17, he lost his business. Well, he didn't lose it, but he started losing contracts due to trying to help a close friend out. And that close friend started riding around in his company truck, going to drug houses, overwriting receipts. And at the end of the day, it came back to caught up with my dad. Now, we can't eat. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he, he pretty much lost it all. But it just showed me the value of it. It showed me the mindset. It showed me, you know, I, I learned from his mistakes. So, so he he helped. He basically instilled that hard work into you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. Which is, dude, that is so so important, man. Um, we see a lot of brothers out here nowadays just kind of lost, man. And I think it starts with not having that guidance exactly. at a young age, not having exactly. that father figure. And you know, I tell a lot of people that, man. And it's like I don't know, it kind of goes over people's heads, but it's like him teaching you that at a young age. And instilling that in you and basically preparing you for life. For life. That's it, basically what he deep. did. It was deep because. Prepared you for life. He, he, everything he said at the time, I couldn't see it mm -hmm. as, a, as a teenager. Of course, I'm like, ah, oh, day, you know, watch your friends around you, you know, uh, watch where you're going, watch your worryabouts. You know, at the time, I'm like, ah, oh, come on now. But once you get older, it start happening, you're like, whoa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, let me sit back and, you know, he was telling the truth about this. So. Uh, it definitely broke me into the real world. Uh, so, you know, once I hit my rock bottom at the time, uh, it opened me up and I realized everything and it was time for, you know, make a comeback or let it all go. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you were always in Dallas? Or yeah. Were you born okay. and raised in Dallas? Yeah. Okay. My whole okay. life. Uh, we was my dad. They had an apartment in Oak Cliff, Texas. Um, it was dry bars all the time. Uh, my grandma, she was one of the biggest drug dealers at the time, putting my mom in jeopardy. So, yeah, she, you know, got to the point where she was Rose, Rose Royce and one of the biggest drug dealers in Dallas. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. That I, don't I, I really, wow. my family know about it, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a lot. It's a lot I don't talk about. Uh, but yeah, my gran grandma, she was one of the biggest drug dealers at the time. Uh, but my dad, man, he got tired of that environment, tired of hearing the shootouts and stuff. So. They decided to either move us to Seagaville or DeSoto. At the time, Seagaville was a little country town nobody didn't know about in Dallas. So we moved out there, and that's where me and my brothers was raised up at. I wouldn't say Seagaville, but it was close to Seagaville. It's still uh, how many siblings? Uh, two two brothers and one sister. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Are you the oldest? Or I'm the baby. <laughs> oh man. So I learned a lot from them. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So yeah. growing up in that environment, though, man, it was. I know you say your dad kind of got you away from that mm -hmm. um but did did i mean do you still uh like how was it though like growing up like do you remember seeing things do you remember like oh uh, you just completely shielded from everything that was going on i was a baby at the time okay. so i was maybe zero well i said zero <laughs> i was one two years old uh, a okay. couple of months maybe uh mm -hmm. when we moved into our first house we've been there ever since then uh but at the time you know we was going back to my grandma's house, of course, where I would see all the, the drugs, you know, the, the crack addicts and people mm -hmm. acting crazy and, you know, how, how you can transform. 
uh, after you take a little pill or you know just mm-hmm. taste some powder, how 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 you can change to a whole another person and open my eyes up uh, deep about it. So mm-hmm. uh, it made me not want to go to that lifestyle. It made me realize what what was life about, the true meaning, you know, other than uh, just trying to find a purpose, you know, not caring about the materialistic stuff, just caring about people's feelings, their heart. And people see me smile all the time, like, man, you always happy. You all, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, y'all life ain't, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> y'all life, y'all good where y'all at, trust mm-hmm. me, because if I tell you everything I've been through, you'd be like, oh, okay, I, I see why you happy and you came this far. So mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people don't know that either, but Dude, happiness is a choice, brother. Hey, it it's is. a choice because, you know, everybody goes through something in life. Um, it's funny. I was just I was just on um, Instagram earlier. Right. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, I was scrolling through the stories a little bit. And there was this, this girl who's just like she's like, man, I'm just having like this tough day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she just said, like, man, today couldn't get any worse. Yeah. And this is not somebody who I communicate with like that. But I just I just felt I just sent a message. And I'm just like. You just got to take it one day at a time. True. You know what I mean? Things happen. Life is ups and downs. I don't know. I don't know what you're dealing with. You know what I mean? I'm not getting your, but I'm just like, sometimes you need to hear that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes you really need to see other people in a certain situation and realize like, man, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things could be worse, worse. than what it is, you know? Um, so let me not, and you got, sometimes you got to let those emotions pass. Exactly. We all going to feel a, some way in the morning or in the afternoon. Something's going to happen to us. Not feeling good that day. Right. Exactly. You just, you just can't stay there. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You got to let it. bounce back and figure exactly. it out. Yeah. Exactly. I, I got you got to let it, you got to let it pass, man. It's feelings. You know how to control your feelings. That's exactly. what it is. Because if uh, you and your girlfriend break up, what you gonna, you're going to be sad the next day. <laughs> so now you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to go to work. Mm-hmm. It's, it's. Feelings, uh, even with business, you know, uh, people fall out in business feelings and they never talk to best friends can be best friends and they, a business deal go wrong. They never talk to each other. Why? Because they let their feelings get too deep. But I always say, if you know how to control your feelings, you know how to control anything. Mm-hmm. Cause, um, at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my own actions. You know, no matter if my girlfriend right here, she go out and cheat, I can't keep up with her every day. You know, once I find out, okay, that's, that's it, but you know I'm not fixed to wake up every day and be like, oh, I feel Following like she cheating. Around. Yeah, let me check her Instagram, <laughs> let me check her Snapchat, her Facebook. Mm-hmm. You know, let me see if I can get through her phone. You know, it's just the crazy stuff. Like I got too much to do mm-hmm. to be doing all that. Let me focus on myself and get, get where I need to be. And I know God will bless me and put you know whatever down my path. He gonna put it right there in front of me. You know, I'm gonna I'm continue to lead. I'm gonna continue to uh, move forward. So mm-hmm. I think I think. It all go into feelings. That's that's my yeah, it's, that's it's my a lot, thought. It's a lot of insecure brothers out here, man. Yeah, Just really insecure people. People, people in yeah. general. Not um, like yeah, yeah. It's, it's so I definitely understand what you mean. In terms of the business, what are some of the businesses that you that you're involved in right now? Like, what do you what do you got going on? I definitely see the shirt. Yeah. Um, I know that's your thing. Talk about that, man. Uh, legends are made. Uh, man, it's crazy because I got the name Legend when I was probably about. 11 years old. 11. So that was a, a nickname? A nickname, oh, legend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, we was at the court one day. It's Kleberg, Kleberg, uh Park it's in Dallas. Every Sunday, it'd be packed Basketball out. Basketball court. Basketball court. All right. Mm-hmm. It'd be packed out back in the days where everybody go, uh, different hoods, people from Pleasant Grove come, uh, people go get their cousins from Oak Cliff to come. And at the end of the day, it's two goals. So maybe 30, 40 people there. So everybody can play. Uh, after a while, time come past where kids can't get on the court because all the adults on there. Like like I said, at the time, I'm like 11 years old, but I had two older brothers who was very good at basketball. Well, one of them was very good at basketball. Uh, so he went to the court. Every day he earned his name, you know, he got picked up every game if he wasn't a captain. Uh, one day came, I was sitting on the side just chilling, and uh, he called me up and picked me on his team. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm fist to play with all these big dudes. I'm nervous and shaking. He's like, come on, I got you. I got you. And uh, sh- they tested me out. You know how they, they try to look person at first, leave me wide open. Mm-hmm. Wop made my first shot. They tried to leave me open again. Wop made my second shot. Got the ball again. Did a little crossover. Okay, third shot going in. So I'm feeling myself. So my brother up here like, oh, yeah, that boy a legend right there. That's I'm trying to tell y'all, that's a legend right there. So, uh. Ever since then, man, we just came up with the name, and uh, 
out the wire, everybody started calling me Legend. Uh, we went back to the studio. We had a, a rap now. I don't know if you know Young Black. Uh, he used to sing Big Boy Stun in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's Big Boy Stun. He had a couple of hot songs. Um, back in the days, we had a group called BYG. Dude. BYG stand for Baller Young Gangster. So we had a group name. Uh, and like I say, it was me, my brother, Young Black at the time. When we go back into the studio, you know, try to come up with our names, our lyrics. And uh, one day I went went back to the studio and I was like, uh, man, I want to, you know, I want to go with the name Legend. Mm-hmm. And they was like, yeah, that's dope. That's Legend. Shit, let's do it. And I went in the studio, came up with a verse to kill the whole song. It set it off in what? middle school. <laughs> All the middle school people. Rapper. Was going, yeah. <laughs> I, I still, still remember the verse. That's what? crazy. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I still remember. I, let me see. Let me What's see. the verse? What's the verse? I don't got a like, beat. Yeah, so, no, nah, it's, it's all verse. good. It was like, uh, man, it's like, Lil Legend, bench pressing, head resting on y'all. I'm going to break y'all with some proper for the boys state that I'm saw. My candy glisten. Listen, diamonds just gone flaws. Wheels rolling, drove blowing, feeling like we lost. Money stacking, he we packing, time to pay the boss. Pop trunk in the candy lack. Haters need to step off, I'm in my lack. Land back, about to roll a little sack. I'm in a zone, can't take me home, can't tell me where I'm at. Dun, dun, oh, we blow. So it went like that, yeah. So I was <laughs> rapping before anything, like, what? yeah. So we find out. We <laughs> yeah. find out. Okay. So a lot of people didn't know that. Uh, I mean, I, I, I did a lot, though, as a young age. My, my parents kept me busy from football, baseball, basketball, uh, every sport I played, man, you know, I won it. MVP in my opinion. I didn't know what it mean back in the days. So I just mm-hmm. realized I had talent now that I look at it. Not not hard work. My hard work was shitty at the time. I, I can admit that because I look back and be like, man, I didn't I never and went to the weight room. room. Mm-hmm. I never practiced. I just I don't go, you know, I skip a whole week of practice and go back to the game and, you know, drop 15, 20 points in middle school, high school. And um uh, it was crazy, man. Yeah, so that's how I got the name Legend, if people wanna know. <laughs> Do, is is that how you kind of got into the whole fitness thing too? Like, uh, were you just always active? Like, how did you get into how did you get into the whole fitness thing? The fitness thing, uh, man. After I got in, I, I got a scholarship high school. Uh, I was a top uh, defensive back in high school, top receiver, defensive back. Uh, second team all state, first team all district, and uh, I think I only played like four games my senior year. I was hurt six games. And still got all team, uh, second team all state and first team all district. But um, at the time, man, I was, I started getting into the street life. You know, my parents they had bought me a car in Monte Carlo. Uh, I got it on my Instagram. <laughs> uh, next thing you know, they bought me some twenty twos at the age of sixteen. It's when no my dad' way. business was still banging. So, you know, uh, I'm stunning around the city. I'm the youngest sixteen year old with a with an old three Monte Carlo with some twenty twos. This is around two thousand and six. So. <laughs> It was crazy, man. I could uh, only imagine. It was the life at the time. I could only imagine. So, and, I mean, it, it helped me grow up fast because, mm-hmm. you know, all the females start coming my way. All the dudes, you know, I got respect for them. Just from being a little dude with a clean whip, call it sports. You know, you got the respect in the hood. So, uh, anywhere I went, I was pretty well well known. But, like I say, uh, life started changing. Once you start getting the materialistic stuff in your life and it bring the wrong people mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. And uh, it showed me the true colors of that. Like, you know, the females I started messing with, dudes they was talking to, started hating. Uh, next thing you know, my car getting broken into. I, my car got broken into like eight times. Wow. Yeah, that. no, that's that's not an accident. Promise. <laughs> that's not Promise. an accident, bro. <laughs> I can call someone eight and be times. like, yeah, eight times in one year. So uh, it was not. It's crazy because I'm gonna be open to you, man. Mm-hmm. It was it was nice. Uh, like I have a female, I'll be with a female, and next thing you know, I'm going back outside. My window broke. I'm like, damn, did she set me up? You know mm. what I'm saying? But it, it, they, they, you know, the females mm-hmm. didn't set me up. You know, one time I went to a bowling alley, and uh, some Mexicans had followed me. Soon I went in, the manager was on top of the roof smoking a cigarette, and seen them pull up right behind me after I went in, and broke into my car, called police. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was just. It, it, it kept happening so much. I'm like, man, it's the shit. Every morning after my first time, you know, I cried. Mm-hmm. In dash, took speakers, window busted. <sighs> I didn't have them. I cried, but after the fourth time, it's like I remember uh, my homegirl came over. She's like, hey, twelve o'clock at night. Like, hey, your windows busted. You know that? <laughs> I I went outside, looked at it, like, hey, <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I 
I'll deal with it tomorrow. You know, it's, I'm used it to it. Just so, happening so much. But it, yeah, but it showed me, you know, like even with failure, how, you know, just anything with life, you know, mm-hmm. you start getting used to it after that first time. First time you scare, mm-hmm. you cry, you hurt. But after a while, you're like, man, I done failed before. You know, I, let me get back up and do it again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it, it teaches you life values and life rules. So that's the crazy part about it and cool part. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, yeah, man, after a while, it was like, my mom was like, hey, you need to get rid of this car for you end up getting robbed, you know, mm-hmm. for some, someone end up killing you for, because mm-hmm. this keep happening too much, so. Um, so you got to get rid of it? Mm-hmm. Uh, too much attention. Yeah, too much attention. Yeah, I, I dude, I, I noticed that. That still happens to this day, right? You get a little <laughs> bit of success. It's, it's like. They coming for you. Dude, when I got my first, <laughs> like, BMW, I worked hard for it. To this day, you can't find one photo of it on any social media. Because mm. I just, it was something I, I did for me, uh-huh. right? Like, I, it was just a car I always wanted, so yeah. I finally got it. But I seen how, like, the attention that I was getting yeah. just in the street. People looking at People you. roll up. I remember driving and, like, I'm just I'm just driving, cool. Uh-huh. Dudes just pull up next to me, like, four of them in the car, and they like, man, let me, let's this? let's race you up there. And trying I'm like, yeah, out. trying to test You're me, like, and I'm like... Man, y'all don't even like, know man, me. Yeah, like, chill out. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to chill, man. Just, I work hard. I'm just chilling, you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? But it's like you get a lot of that attention. Yeah. And I never wanted to, you know, I don't I don't like to put that kind of energy. I mean, my thing is if 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 something's gonna come your way, you gotta deal with it. Exactly. But I believe that don't don't invite it, don't attract it. Mm-hmm. You know, you got people out there that's just like they invite bad to, things. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're they ready. They, they ready for it. And I'm just like if it's gonna come, it's gonna come. But mm-hmm. I'm not gonna roll the red carpet out for it. You exactly. know what I mean? I'm not gonna be like, yeah, come, boom, I got it. Go about my business. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? So now nah, I feel you. Even to this day, man, it's like you can have success, but it's like you kind of let that speak for itself. If you really doing well, uh-huh. it let that speak for itself. Yeah. Right. Rather than like going extra. Right. Yeah. That whole fake it to make, make it like, thing. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, I mean, we all struggle. People mm-hmm, scared, mm-hmm. and that's what I realized about life. Well. I wouldn't say it's life, it's social media that's mm-hmm. making it like that. It made people scared to struggle because you see the people who succeeding. Uh, like I tell people, I struggle every day, man. Even right now with me having more than 10, 15 clients and having, you know, a clothing brand uh, and everything else I put my time into, I still struggle on a daily basis, you know, and it's nothing wrong with that, but I'm figuring it out. I'm happy. Every morning I wake up, I'm more happy than the day before. Why? Because I figure something else out. I figure out how to contact these people. I figure out how to edit this photo. I figure out how to do this video editing. Mm-hmm. So it's the little things that make a big deal, what people don't realize. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, somebody can do something very, very small, but you, you need to notice the little small things is what make the big leaps in your life. So mm-hmm. I always tell people, like, appreciate everything you do even if it's something small even if you just learn how to read a new word every day mm-hmm. you growing so uh that's the main thing uh, uh it's the little things man yeah the little it's, things it's that count people overlook people, that mm-hmm. and i always talk about the process man and i always tell people like dude if you don't enjoy the process and you just uh, in it for the results so you you be it's like oh, it you eats just, you up man. yeah it's like you just be spinning in circles oh, you know because there's always something else to be God, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. like, if you don't find joy in what it is that you're doing you know and yeah. you just find joy, your joy is attached to things, is a, it's attached to a certain level of something. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what happens if you don't attain it? Or better yet, what happens when you do attain it and yeah. you realize it ain't all it's cracked up to be and then yeah. you look around and you it's, like... It's a whole different story. You know what yeah. I mean? I done sold my soul. I done did all these things and like, okay, I got these stuff, but... I still feel, you know, I wake up in the morning, what's I'm so next? stressed out. Yeah, yeah what's you know what next? I mean? And that's, that's that's what make the leaders and uh, the successful entrepreneurs different than the regular people who's just trying to open up a business and get going. Because when I wake up, my first thing, my mindset is on my brand, my clients. Let me get my client schedule. Okay, I need to get work done today. What's mm-hmm. next? Mm-hmm. If I need new inventory, if I need a new design, I don't have the money for it. Let me see how I'm going to figure this out. I'm not fixed to waste none of my time on social media today. I'm fixed to wake up and learn how to figure this, figure it out. And people see, still come up to me this day and be like, man, how you figure that out? How you mm-hmm. do that? I'm like, you can do it too. Mm-hmm. Stop entertaining this bullshit and mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. get on your shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you, 
I, I sit around people and and I just like see what they do. They talk a good game, but then if you sit around a person, a person will tell you their whole life mm-hmm. in the first fifteen mm-hmm. minutes. You know, sometimes it's just be good to listen because mm-hmm. you can get around a new a person and what they doing. Y'all arguing back and forth over. Oh, I got this. Yeah, well, I was gonna get that new te- new 2017 Camaro, man. But so and so and so, you know, they mm-hmm. they keep you going and they they just trying to make they self look good and feel right. good. And it's like, right at the time, like, bro, you ain't you know you ain't got a stunt, you ain't got a lie, you know, you right here right now. All right, let's figure out how you gonna grow. Mm-hmm. That's the main thing, you know. Even if you're driving a 1999 Honda, let's see how can you get a 2006 Honda now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. crazy because mm-hmm. people would think. Oh, it's 2018. Why would I want a 2006? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, I know I can't afford a 2018, but maybe I can afford a 2006. You know what I'm saying? But once I get this 2006, it's going to help me for the next two or three years to get mm-hmm. where I need to go. Mm-hmm. And maybe I will be able to afford a 2020. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, man, it's, 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 it's Dude, a process, it's, it's bro. steps, man. It's my, a first, my first call was a Honda Accord 1993. I was, what, 18? At the time, 16, 17, 18 mm-hmm. at the time. You know, my pops got it for me. Um, had that car for about a year or so, ran that through the ground. Yeah, wanted something. And he got me another <laughs> one. It was it was like a 95, like a two-year, the same thing, Honda Honda Civic. Same thing. Drove that for two years yeah. this time. But, you know, but I took better care of it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, and yeah, I appreciate, appreciate him it. for not, like, Cause at the time I'm like I'm looking around I'm like man I want an Audi I want this I want that mm-hmm. he looked at me like we gonna get your Honda Accord well you better learn how to drive <laughs> you better learn work how to on drive it. before you I'm do it teach you how to work on it now and I'm like man think that was a great call. in the moment you like man you holding me back I'm trying to stunt you yeah, know what I mean yeah yeah I want the emails yeah. I want to go to prom and yeah 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 you want to live but little life. did I know I'm looking around I'm like hold up. I'm the one picking up all my people, friends. These people ain't even got cars. Your car. Exactly. You ain't got it. You ain't got got it. Got, they got no problems hopping in the car. They like, yeah, it hurts. Let's go over here. Let's I go over there. I got some gas. I got, hey, we can do this tonight. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm winning. You know what I mean? What the hell is me like? I don't I see your you. friends picking you up. I told you. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. So it's up to you, bro. So exactly. yeah, I know what it is to just kind of build up. I think everybody should, it should be that way for everybody, man. Because yeah. if you just jump straight to something, um, especially if you get it so easily, you gonna you're not going to appreciate it. It's like, you know, it's like these not. NFL players. That's why they all appreciate the money or NBA players. Because mm-hmm. most of them, just a the person, and they ain't never had nothing. So you mean to tell me this dude go from $0 to one day to a million dollars? Of course he fits the blow, especially if he ain't got the right people in his circle because he never had it. So all this materialistic stuff he's been thinking about, want to do, stunning clubs, pop bottles. He doing it, you know what I'm saying? You keep doing it over time, then you get addicted to it because it's a lifestyle now to you, mm-hmm. and uh, you end up going broke because most of your energy is going into impressing other people pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all materialist stuff is, man. You just want to impress the next person. I agree, man. So, I want to talk about how did you come about um, establishing this business, man, you know, in terms of the clothing. Like, what, what got you into it? How did it start? Oh, uh, man, it started from uh, – after I got out of college, man, uh, wow, I didn't get out of college. I got in trouble in college. Uh, I went to Southern Arkansas, uh, played football, scholarship. Uh, I, I hated it down there. I hate to say it, but I hated it down there. I, would just, uh, I just didn't want to be down there. And my mom and dad was going through a separation at the time, and uh, things got very hard. Right? I had no money. I couldn't eat. I probably had $5 for a whole month. So uh, at the time, I started letting people at college campus drive my car just to bring in money because I had a, a new Monte Carlo with mm-hmm. some rims. I'll, everybody wanted to drive and pull up at their girl house or whatever, take their girl out to eat at college. So, you know, I just tell them, give me $10, $15, you can take the car for the night, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. uh, just to have some little money. But uh, after I got in trouble, man, uh, I had gotten theft by receiving a felony case. Mm-hmm. And it hurt me, you know what I'm saying? I was in... I knew what happened. Then I came back home, not knowing I had a national warrant for my arrest. And uh, mm-hmm. I was driving one day in Dallas and got pulled over. And uh, police was about to let me go. He's like, hey, come here. You know, you got a national warrant after your arrest. I'm like, wait a minute, national? <laughs> wow. Like, this, 
you tripping. Like, ain't no other word for it. He's like, nah, national war. I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus, I'm in deep trouble. Yeah, he like, he got to bring you in now. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, I went to jail. I went to Rockwall County, man. They gave me a $100,000 bond. I couldn't pay it. Three days later, they transferred me to Arkansas. Now I'm in Arkansas fighting the case. Um, I was stuck in Arkansas jail for two weeks till the judge showed me favor. Uh, I had a, I had a professor at the time, Mister Stewart. Uh, he wrote a recommendation, uh, recommendation letter, letter for me. Uh, he got me a job working with him, and you know, just tell him how good a kid I was. You know, he, he wrote the judge that, and luckily the judge looked up and. Uh, you know, he kind of gave it to me easy, I'll say. He gave me 140 hours community service. Um, I think I still had the felony record on my, uh, the felony on my record. So, you know, once I realized I had a felony on my record, it brought me in the grind mode. It's like, oh, shit. Because now you it know it's going to be real. hard to get you a job. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm 18. Mm-hmm. I can't get no job. I'm a felony. Uh, like, what am I going to do? Uh, but at the time, my homeboy got me a quick job at the airport, DFW airport. So I was working there, but still was unhappy. A uh, couple of maybe I did it for like a year, quit it, and still unhappy, man. Still broken. I'm like, ah, I gotta figure something out. Uh, I moved to Arlington, Texas. I didn't want to come back to Dallas, so I moved to Arlington with my mom at the time. Uh, Change your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. Cause in Dallas, I know if I came back to my hood, same people. Either I was going to jail, or I was gonna get killed. Cause the people I grew up with was. You know, still on the same thing, hustling. Uh, so I moved to Arlington. Show me a different life because out there, they, they're a little more friendly. You know, they was trying to live the hood life, but they was a little more friendly out there. I'm like, all right. Uh, you know, they nice. <laughs> <laughs> they, it's crazy because uh, I met my homeboy at the airport, Jeff. And he was like, uh, that's how I first met Jeff. And he put me with plenty of contact right now. Uh, he was like, hey, man, you want to go to a kickback with me tonight? I was like. Nigga, I ain't trying to kick somebody ass. Like, mm-hmm. I ain't finna go to no kickback, my nigga. You know, chill. Like, what is that? He's like, nah, it's, it's, it's something that's very chill. Females gonna be there, drink. It ain't like a club lounge. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah, it's, it's chill. Just come on. And I'm like, in Dallas, you know, as a young age, we just linked up. And it's 20 niggas in the garage shooting dice. That's our, mm-hmm. that's our life, you know. Mm-hmm. Dice life, you know what I'm saying? If not, we're we trying to find a, another way to get money. Uh, but when he taught me a kickback, I went to a kickback my first time. It was females there, guys. I'm like, oh, shit, this is a different lifestyle. This is mm-hmm. the life I've been trying to live, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, I'm living now. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, it just showed me, like, you know how, how friendly people was. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, I ain't got to be this tough guy no more. I ain't got to, you know, feel like I got to get in. I ain't. I don't feel like I'm fit to get into a fight or start beefing with someone. So it kind of made me realize, you know, it's, it's good people out here show me a different life other than the mm-hmm. hood life. And uh, you know, I just went on from there, and I went to TCC, started meeting different people. And uh, Jeff was like, "Man, I think I'm gonna get into training." He's like, "Man, this school life ain't for me." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm training as in personal physical, training. personal training." Okay. Yeah. So Jeff was like, "Man, I think I'm gonna get into to personal training." And I was like, "Man, I ain't really know what personal training was at the time." I was like, "Let me look it up." You know what I'm saying? Because I might do this with him. Luckily, uh, he went back to school, and I was like. Hey, I'm gonna try this personal training thing. Uh, I had tore my ACL. Mm. I had just tore my ACL and Achilles that year because I was trying to go back to football and play at TCU. And um, I got I got in I got in in a school. And the coach was like, "Well, you're gonna be a walk on. You know, we can't give you no scholarship or nothing. You know, then once you come back, you have to prove to us, you know, that you're not really injured and you can do the things you used to do." So I'm like, ah, oh, man, it's a whole nother two year process. I I can't afford school, so. Um, I found the job at Coca-Cola. I don't know how I got it because I thought I had the felony case. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the time, my dad had a, co- a contract with, co- well, he still do had a contract with Coca-Cola. And uh, he would talk to one of the head guys and they pulled out my application. I started working as a part-time merchandiser. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I started working as a part-time merchandiser. Uh, I was into my last year of school. I, I probably had like 24 hours on college left. And uh, I decided to just drop out. I was like, man, I'm going to try this personal training. So I went ahead and got certified, started doing the research on it, got certified. Uh, I was rehabbing my knee at the time, too. I had an ACL surgery. So I couldn't afford the people downtown because I was paying like $40 a day for parking in just a therapy session. 
I'm like, man, they eating up my pocket. So um, I started going to a rent center right by my house. And we was just, me and my brother was getting ready for a trip uh, to go to Mexico. And uh, we just started working out with each other. And at the time working out, it was an old lady in there. Uh, she was probably like six years old. She can barely walk and move. And uh, I just started helping her out, showing her little things, how to work out, you know, how to keep her muscle endurance, how to work her heart rate, mm-hmm. keeping her on the treadmill, monitor. I was just showing her, you know, not training her. I want a person to train at the time. So that's more like physical therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day she came back to the gym. She just hugged me tight. She's like, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm like, thank me for what the heck I did. You know, like, oh, Lord. And she was like, I went and got my checkup and my doctor said I'm in the best shape of my life. And he was like, whatever you've been doing, you better keep doing this. She, she was like, I told my doctor, it's a little black kid who would help me out at the gym uh, mm-hmm. that showed me what to do. And she was like, well, you might need to keep that black kid around because uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's keeping you alive <laughs> yeah, right he, now. Yeah, he's getting the job done. Your blood mm-hmm. pressure normal. You ain't got to take these pills no more. And, uh, Miss Delia, she was like the head of City of Dallas Race Center at the time. Uh, she walked up to me with a stack of papers like this big. And she was like, hey, do you want to be a personal trainer for the City of Dallas? I'm like, City of Dallas? She was like, yeah, all these race centers. It's like, I want to say like 40 rates. I'm like, man, I can't train in all these rates. And she was like, oh, you can just pick the ones you want to train in and just stay there or whatever. So I'm like, dang, this money now. So... I ended up starting a boot camp. The first lady was signed up uh, was a 60-year-old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I started, yeah, I had like 15 people show up in my first boot camp class and started pro- promoting it on social media. And Dude, boot camps. Boot camps. Great opportunity. People, you, you can take people to the park. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, like exactly. Outdoors. And uh-huh. just, and I, found, I, first, I found my first two clients. I probably was making $400 a month off of them. Uh, my first two clients, I was like, man, this training life ain't going to work. I can't live off $400 a month. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but at the time, I still had my little part time. I'd probably bring it in like another 800 with that. So $1,200 a month. I'm like, man, it's still struggling. But let me see where it takes me. You know, I can give it three or four years and see mm-hmm. where it takes me. And every day I just woke up, stayed motivated and kept pushing. And it took me on. Next thing you know, uh, me and Jeff linked up the owner at the compound. And it was on a Friday night. Everybody going to clubs. I always like working on Friday and Saturdays Mm because I know everybody out partying. I feel like that's my time to be peace of mind Mm -hmm. and just really Mm -hmm. dial in and get a head start in front of people. Mm -hmm. So he hit me up. We stayed at the gym till like 1 o'clock that morning on a Friday night getting a workout and just talking it up. You know, just talking about business and everything. You know, his ideas and my ideas. And we came together. And ever since then, it's been the compound gym. Um I started Legends of May. Uh, my brother had the idea. He was like, hey, man, uh, I got an idea for you. I want to help you with your, you know, your image. He was like, man, I think you, you know, you should start a clothing brand or something. And I got the name Lamb. I'm like, Lamb? At the time, I'm on the phone like, man, this shit sounds stupid. But I'm going to think about it. I'm going to sleep on it. You know Did he saying? tell you what Lamb stood for? Yeah. He, he told said, you? Yeah, he was like, Lamb. I'm like, Lamb. And he's like, yeah, Legends of May. And I'm like, Ah, uh, he knew that's what they called you. Yeah, legend. He went gave me the name. Okay, yeah, he okay. Gave me so the he, name he came so, up. Yeah, okay, he's looking for it. He's looking out for me. So okay. Uh, he was like, "Yeah, legends are made." I was like, "All right, bro, I'm gonna sleep on it." So two days came. I'm like, legends are made. Lamb, legends are made. And I'm like, "Hey, bro, you got a logo for it?" He's like, "Nah, I ain't got no logo." So at the time, I had a, a white my white boy named Sam. He was working at the gym with me. He was real good with, like, designing and Mm -hmm. stuff. So he came up with the first logo for me. Not this one, Mm -hmm. but it's similar to this one. And I'm like, okay, I got the idea. And this thing, you know, we started putting it on shirts, uh, started promoting it. I was like, man, I know I got an image. You know, I can swag this out and put a good look on it. Ain't nobody going to mess with me at first because it's your brand. I ain't going to believe in it. I don't know what the hell he laying but mm-hmm. you know, ten years later, they be looking at it like, damn, mm-hmm. that's the new, that's the new sports gear of the world mm-hmm. now. So uh, it's crazy. So uh, we went from there, man, and ever since then, I was like, I, right, I'm gonna roll with the idea. Legends are made, man. Uh, now that's the hard part. You gotta find people to make the shirts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. the hard part. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, 
it felt like it was hard to get over that hump. You're like, right. man, I can't find nobody to make the shirts, you know, so so, so find good prices for them. Yeah, because yeah. it's 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 a it's a business exactly. for them. You got to understand, like, okay, what's different material shirts, shirts. and mm. different oh. types of prints and yeah. different this and different that. It's like I think people just we so used to walk into the store just buying a shirt. We see the price, price on it. If we like it, we keep it moving. But we don't realize like the, what went on to kind of get, get that, that shirt oh, produced. So a lot. you have to know that if you're trying to create your own thing, you got to know the ins and outs to know like. Okay, what am I paying for? Most definitely. You know what I mean? So, Most I, I, it's a process. Like, mm-hmm. like people don't understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so once you, uh, you know, once I first got the first shirts made, the dude I was getting them made from, he believed in my brand. You know, he believed in my hustle. So uh, he knew I had the street mentality. So he was like, "Man, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and front you these shirts." Man, he fronted me them shirts. I sold them like two days. Went back for some more. Like, hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> what's next? You flip. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get like, flip. let's get to work. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, I told you I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay, okay. So we come in with ideas. Uh, and uh, ever since then, the shirts, you know, the brand started expanding. We was at the compound gym where people was working out at. So we giving them to people. Start selling them, taking pictures. I'm doing everything I can now. Mm-hmm. now I'm spending money putting on, in that work. I'm spending money on designs, you know, softwares, cameras, equipment. So I'm coming out of money every month. And uh people don't realize that it, it took a lot of work. I've been having I started the clothing brand like three or four years three years ago, been training for five years now. Mm-hmm. So it just you see the process when you look back, like, wow, from my first website to my website now. From my first design to this shirt now, just mm-hmm. the quality of the mm-hmm. shirt. You know how mm-hmm. the other shirt was just a mm-hmm. cotton shirt. You wash it now. Mm-hmm. This one long, got mm-hmm. the stitches and the uh, inside tags mm-hmm. done. Just you learn, you yeah, learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a process. Mm-hmm. I love the compound gym too, man. I told you that it, uh, it's it's, it's a spot <laughs> for those people out there who don't really know. Like this ain't your Planet Fitness uh, nah. type of. This is very. It's 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 like it's hardcore, but at the same time, yeah. I feel like it's very welcoming, right? Yeah. Like when, even when I was there, like I saw like the type of people that were there. These weren't like all muscle bound, yeah. like these yeah. are regular folks. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the vibe, I it's, just love the vibe in there, man. It, it seemed very chill, um, and just down to work. Like it's sometimes I know when I go into a gym, man. You know, I put the headphones on. I just want to get in there, get to work. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get to work, bang it out. Get that Keep hour in and get your day going. And I feel like that gym just kind of, it, it, it creates that environment where it's like, there's not too much going on. It's like, yo, just get in, get, get to out. it, and get Everybody out. in there serious, so you got no choice. Mm-hmm. You can't come in mm-hmm. there playing. You can't come in there and be on your phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I say, you know, most of us in there, we come in there to hit it hard. So mm-hmm. uh, we, t- we take it serious in there. And, you know, just me being up there every day, me watching mm-hmm. over it. I'm trying to make sure we stay on track, you know, keep that same, uh, keep the same motivation going, you know, inspiring every person that come in there, you know, like you see us working out. We didn't mm-hmm. get these muscles just by looking at you, you know what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. come in here and work out mm-hmm. and they motivate them. And like, oh, I'm going to come in and work out. I got people who come in there and follow my whole workout after I do it. So mm-hmm. it's crazy. I don't say nothing. I'm like, <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. You just got a free workout. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. come in there. If you see me doing that and you come right behind me after I get done and do it, that's fine. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, mm-hmm. you got to get it how you got to get it. Mm-hmm. You ain't paying for you it. Know, so. funny you say that because I don't really, I, I, It's now that you say that, mm-hmm. I think about all the times I've been in the gym, I don't really be seeing personal oh, yeah. trainers put in the work. Oh, nah, it's mostly. almost like, it's like they work there. But then they'll go to a gym somewhere else yeah. and do their workout. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Like I never really see them do putting, putting in work, work like like consistently. Of course, sometimes you know, you, I there. guess it was his off day or maybe he got off early. He might do a little something. Yeah. But like you don't see them working out like that. So you're saying like people they see you putting in the work, so they know you dedicated. Mm-hmm. So when you telling them to do something or showing them an exercise, I feel like people will believe you more. Like oh man, he's he's putting in that work, work too. They see me doing mm-hmm. it, so it's like. This ain't no YouTube video, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm. I, it's not no social media. Mm-hmm. You see me in here sweating, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You see me in here trying to lift 315, give it all I got. So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. this this real life. Ain't nobody spotting me, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. But at the time while I'm doing these workouts, I'm trying to get all my anger out, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to 
get my mindset right for mm-hmm. you know what's coming you know mm-hmm. what what needs to be done you know so mm-hmm. that's what's going in through my workouts just like any other drug you know addiction you know how people smoke just to feel good or people mm-hmm. drink just to heal their pain mm-hmm. you know i go in the weight room to get it all out you know because that's what got me there when i was down at the bottom you know when i went go into a weight room trying to get my knee back right trying to be the person i was before it was just like get back to your old stuff because I know you was killing these things mm-hmm, at the end of mm-hmm. the day. So, mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Get back to your old self. Let's get stronger. Let's get more focused. But at the same time, you still got obstacles hitting you every day. You still got people hitting you. You got people blowing your phone up that's trying to distract you. And uh, it's it's a million things coming your way. So it, it teaches yourself how to stay focused and on the right road. So if you can just kind of follow your routine and hit the weight room every day, you live a healthy lifestyle, it helps you get a lot of emotions out. And that's what I want people to know. Like, man, it's a lifestyle for me. Mm-hmm. Trust me. You see what I do. I'm an entrepreneur. I, I barely had time to work out. I put my clients before my workouts now. Mm-hmm. And I probably work out three or four times a week. I try to hit it five or six. But uh, like I said, I put my business first. So sometimes I might hit it three times a week. You know, I might get a little weaker. But mm-hmm. it's a lifestyle for me. I want to live healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to live lo- longer. I want to feel good in, in the inside not only look good on the outside mm-hmm. so what do you feel as a trainer like what do you feel is the hardest thing that you usually have to kind of explain the the clients that you get like do you find like it's more the mental or is it more the physical like what do you what do you try to what have you noticed like man i gotta work on that, on that uh, with that person it's depend on what client mm-hmm. lady clients more physics, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're more clients, physical. They're more, yeah. Mm-hmm. Guy clients, more mental. Because, mm-hmm. you know, guys, uh, some of them come in thinking about females, you know, mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. about getting money, thinking about uh, other things that's on their mind, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A female, they're going to come in there and like, hey, I, I want to work out. Teach me how. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They just mm-hmm. need to be taught. Mm-hmm. Guys, you got to push them and stuff. Most of them can do it on their own. They just need the little motivation. I give them... Uh, but females, you know, they, I think a lot of them come in there and ready to kill it because, you know, the social media set the tone. They see all these fitness models and people who selling, you know, these fake <laughs> workouts mm-hmm, and stuff, mm-hmm. but they just give them the motivation. The tummy tees yeah, and yeah, all yeah, the yeah, BS. You got it. Yeah, <laughs> they I ain't got, got I ain't, I'm not going to talk down on another company, and, but you see. But yeah, yeah. You I, see. I, I hear you. At the, at, Listen, I, I'll talk about it. <laughs> hey, <go ahead. laughs> I'll talk about it. The I, bottom I sure, line is this. I sure want to do okay, it. it. The bottom line is this. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the work. There's, there's nothing, you know, there's surgeries and all, you know, people do things, but it's like at the end of the day, it's the, one of those things that you just can't get around. Nah, you got to put you, in the You got to sweat. You got to watch what you put in your body. You got to put in that work. There's no magic pill. There's no overnight thing. Uh-huh. It's just... It's just one of those things, man. You got to be willing to put in that work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Bottom line. Yeah. So Bottom line. It so teaches you a lot. With with the fitness industry, right? So I know your, so your clothes is tailored around that. Like, how would you describe it? Like, are you geared towards, is it uh, street fashion or is it hot luxury fashion? Like, how would you describe it? Uh, I would say it? a whole sportswear. Like, okay. at the everyday, uh, like I said, I'm working on clear. inside the gym and outside the gym. So. It's not no fitness brand. Most people are like, oh, I love your fitness. I hear up and correct them like, bro, cheers. You know, it's mm-hmm. not a fitness brand. It's a lifestyle brand. You know, mm-hmm. you, I got the clothes on right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see how I'm rocking it with the shorts and everything. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's it's an everyday brand, man. I got clothes you can wear at nighttime if you want to go to the club. I got jackets, you know. Mm-hmm. You can kind of style out. Then I got, you know, the girl you can take to the gym with you. Wear it. Make yourself feel good. And uh, at the end of the day, I want you to look at the logo and see the name and like, hey, you know, I got this. I want to leave a legacy behind. Wow. So uh, that's why I started the brand for, you know, Legends Are Made to, I want people to realize, you know, at the end of the day, when you die, ain't nothing left mm. for you but your name. You know what I'm saying? So you either gonna, mm-hmm. you're either going to leave a legacy or ain't nobody going to remember you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? People mm-hmm. going to forget about you once you get buried. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, your name gonna be brought up every. If I got clothes, I got mm-hmm. yeah. If I got clothes in new, uh, if I got clothes in Switzerland, China, all that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm dead. But hey, my logo still being wore around mm-hmm. thousands of places. It's like mm-hmm. it's crazy. People gonna forever remember me. And I think that's what life is about for yeah. for me especially yeah. to leave that legacy behind. So 
my kids, my grandkids, all the people behind me can see like, hey, this dude from Dallas, Texas, and blew up a clothing brand. So, yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta leave an impact. Of course, you know what I mean. Of course. And, and do you, do you have kids? Uh, I got one kid, one little Boy, girl. Little girl. girl? Uh-huh. Okay, how old? Uh, she about to be one next month, so she's <laughs> eleven months. Yeah. Okay. So eleven months. Yeah. She's still early. I can still say congratulations. <laughs> Free show. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I got a little girl. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. you gotta yeah you gotta be able to protect her and and dude, I tell you man, I I was talking to someone the other day about kids. just kids and just I, I have no kids now and um. But I, I I was talking to them in a way where it's just like, man, I'm scared to have kids nowadays, man, because yeah. I look at what's going on around us, man, and too much. I'm just like, it is a, it's, I put it to you like this, it's not that I don't want to, mm-hmm. it's just that I know that I have to have a plan for that child. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Because the days of like, you have a kid and then you have, you know, the family, you, you could kind of just go through the motions, uh-huh. right? I feel like, you do that. There's so much influence out there okay. that's gonna they're gonna they're gonna uh, they're gonna pull your child away from you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, the, mm-hmm. Everything from the schools, everything from what's on TV, social media. Like, it's, it's easy. It's like you up. can't hide them from it. Like it's, you can't. At all. Back in the day, you could. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? All. You could say, right, you don't listen. I want you in the house at yeah. <laughs> as long as you in the house at six, you good. Yeah, you uh-huh. did your job. But it's like now, it's like. They could be in the house doing bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They, media, they don't got to go outside. They could be in the house doing the wrong things. They could. So it's like, where do you, you know what I mean? It's it's so difficult and it really takes, um, that's why I say, like, you got to have a plan. Like, you got to know, like, okay, I'm having a boy, I'm having a girl, yeah. whatever. You see what you're building right now? Yeah. You want to be able to, you know, by the time she gets older um, and your business is where you want it to be and everything, you may want to say, hey, look. You want to take over this business? You want to be a part, part of this? Of you, you give her an option yeah. is what I'm saying. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, or just one of the trades, the yeah. training, the cameras, or you can be the photography for the company. Or you teacher. give her an option like where it's like you don't have to immediately be thrown out to the wolves where it's like, what do I try to do? What am I? You know, it's like, hey, look, I'm successful with this. I have this. You can be a part of it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And instill that in her. And then for all you know, she grows up, she wants to be an entrepreneur and she's doing things. Her own thing. You see what I'm so, saying? Yeah, doing exactly. her own thing. So I feel like you got to have a plan. Like you can't just be like, all right, I have this kid, send them to school. Yeah. Hopefully they go to college. What? You, up to well, today? People don't, yeah, people don't realize, she, but a lot of people's mindsets is stuck in one place like because they work nine to five. So mm-hmm. they mind stuck at this nine to five. They don't have time to think outside the box. So, with my time, when I wake up in the morning, I'm I'm either reading, studying and stuff on my own, you know what I'm saying, that I can learn myself. It might take me a little longer, but once you get it down, you see the value of you like, wow, a job not going to teach this. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A job won't teach you this. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And people get stuck in their mindset like, oh, they get off their job and I like they tired and on Facebook looking at other people's lives and mm-hmm. why that person making it happen. But yeah, it's, 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 it's that time limit and Everything, I say timing is everything, even with, with children, you know, because mm-hmm. like you say, you feel like you got to have your life together in order mm-hmm. to have children. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, once they come, you just kind of adapt to it and, you know, it motivates you more like, all right, let me figure this out. Oh, yeah. that's, me, that's the greatest me, motivation, yeah. man, because it's <laughs> like, like, I can't doing sleep now. You, yeah. That 5 a.m. when I want to sleep in and, you know, mm-hmm. try to do it later, and I, I got to do it now because every day counts. You know, I got somebody depending on me who's looking up to me. Mm-hmm. So that's the main thing. No matter who in your way, you got to get through them and get through whatever situation mm-hmm. just for that little one. <laughs> What's the toughest thing you've learned um, as a business owner? Like, oh. Uh, the toughest thing I learned was probably not to put your feelings involved, not to get your feelings too deep involved. Like I say, people always say that in relationships, but I say business too. Because, uh, like I say, everybody find new clients. People find new people, to, you know. And uh, I know a lot of people mess up their business just by feelings. You know, they start training the client and get – Catch emotions mm-hmm. and start that's messing. That's my client. With, yeah, that's my client. She's fine. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I used to train her. Like, bro, everybody, you only mm-hmm. got one life to live, bro. This year gonna pass by. Next year gonna pass by. Mm-hmm. She might move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, mm-hmm. what you gonna do? Mm-hmm. But uh, even with business separation, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
if me and you had a business together and we figure out like, all right, we're gonna split up. You take way more money than me. Mm-hmm. How I'm gonna control my feelings? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. oh, he just took 1.2 mil and I'm only getting 200 thousand. How I'm gonna control my? Feelings? I'm heated now. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. people do, they not thankful for that 200 thousand. What they want? I mean, if the if everything equal, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like you deserve that 1.2 mil, I deserve my 200 thousand. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't feel no type of way about you taking that 1.2 mm-hmm. mil. Mm-hmm. You know, if uh, if the situation equal. Then I need to be hunt- cool with my two hundred thousand and go on and figure out how to start my next business or, and keep everything good between us. Cause at the end of the day, we human beings. We gotta live our life no matter I what. I agree. Uh, but people get caught up in you know the business and want to start lawsuits and mm-hmm. uh, drug addictions. Another mm-hmm. one. So I say feelings, man. I seen a lot of people lose lose their business just having their feelings deep involved. Yeah, so you you learn to take the emotion yeah, out of the job, the yeah, you know, and, and just be about the numbers or be about like the the, you know, the goal, you yeah, know, the your goal. business. Yeah, you gotta you gotta to. keep it moving. If one person step out, you gotta find a way to keep it moving anyway. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. uh, I always say just depend on yourself because once you start depending on other people, that's when you start getting let down. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You can't be a you can't be a leader like that. Mm-hmm. If you're depending on other people, even if you is the boss. And you know somebody under you who's smart and you putting all this work on that person. Now you you know you showing this person the ropes, which is a good thing. But now your feelings getting involved because this person might take over your action. How you gonna feel about that? You get it? Mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I always just say uh, main thing with friendships, business. You know, try not to put your feelings deep. You know, not don't let them get deep involved and learn how to be open and honest. That's the most important thing. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn that for myself because, you know, I'm my feelings, I'm kind of cold hearted just from the street life. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of cold hearted. But every everybody else I'm around, like, I'm like, bro, why are your feelings involved? Why you, you know, why you crying, my nigga? Like, chill out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end, at it's, it's the feminine energy, man. A lot of these guys, they just, you know, they don't know how to handle they, it, bro. They, they, they don't wanna be, know well, how to everybody handle the be emotions. The, mm-hmm. They want to be the top dog. Mm-hmm. Everybody want to be the top dog mm-hmm. these days. And it's like. That's why I don't ever show nothing I do. If you mm-hmm, <laughs> if you ever mm-hmm. notice my Instagram, I don't never like mm-hmm. talk about a lot or mm-hmm. show. It's cause it's like man, I'm gonna keep working undercover and I'll let y'all keep shining. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, if a five hundred thousand dollar chick hit my account, I still want to act normal and mm-hmm. still chase my goals. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Without y'all knowing, like, oh, he ain't never had it before. Mm-hmm. It's like I know the value. You know what I'm saying? I know my value. So mm-hmm. uh, I just keep working with that. You know, that's when I made the transition from full time worker to be an entrepreneur, doing my own thing. The biggest thing that I realized is and I, I tell people like they ask me, like, what's the biggest change or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. It's working for myself is doing things, knowing that everybody's not seeing what I'm doing, doing because even when you at a job, right, there's mm-hmm. something that you're working towards, right? You know, okay, if I get this amount of sales, my name is going to pop up pop on, on the email list, leader or something. List, yeah. You know, it's like there's yeah. there's always somewhere somebody's patting you on the back, you know, when you have a job. There's, oh, I got you working towards a raise. Like there's always something working towards. But when you are working for yourself, right, there's wow. days where I'm sure you, you, you grinding, mm-hmm. grinding. Nobody knows you did 12 hours. Nobody yeah. knows you yeah. did x amount of hours or you just you you banged out so many clients you know and and juggle so much things that day nobody knows but you Mm -hmm. but you still doing it because you know what your ultimate goal is and that goal might be a year from now might be two years from now but you still do it yeah so i always tell people like when you can do something for yourself and nobody's watching and you still working hard at it you cold that's when you that's when you know you're doing something right you see what i'm saying because if if you only motivated by like or right, people well, you know, nobody, you, yeah, nobody DM. saying nothing, nobody liking my pictures, nobody, da-da. Mm. If that's it's what you on, then it's like you might as well hang it up because people going to always be shifty. Yeah. You know what I mean? They like this today. They don't like that tomorrow. It's like if you basing it on other people's gratification, mm-hmm. then you're never going to get anywhere. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And that's, that? that's, I mean, 2018, how, how the world set right now. It's hard for you to, you know what I'm saying? Because you put your stuff out there for people to like to get, you know what I'm saying? A little feedback and you see mm-hmm. nobody not liking it. It make you want to give up like, all right, man, I got 10 likes. This ain't going to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But 
but people fail to realize, man, it's I I done had plenty of nights like that where uh, just this year alone, I done put ten thousand dollars into my brand, and I haven't made ten thousand dollars in my brand. It's like mm-hmm. I'm tired of putting money into it, man. Let me let me just go ahead and save up and stack up, and you know maybe have. Fifty thousand dollars saved in cash, where I can go to the club. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, it take mm-hmm. you back to the old, but then you like, I look back and like, damn, I got ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars worth of clothes. I got a whole store set up right now. I don't care if anybody sound broke. Look mm-hmm. what you know. Look what mm-hmm. I accomplished from one shirt. Mm-hmm. You know, I got different jackets, a whole gyms layout up here. I saw the boxing gloves too. The you boxing gloves. Man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how could you try to say that about me? You don't even know me. You know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. <laughs> you're a fool that's what mm-hmm. i tell him i was i have a saying right mm-hmm. that i don't have, i don't mind being around people who don't have anything yeah i just don't want to be around people who don't want anything bro you see what i'm saying because yeah. i've seen the difference i've yeah. seen people who have a lot of stuff or it looks that way mm-hmm. but then on the inside or when you really dig or when you really find out it's like you don't know how they get it you yeah, see what i'm saying exactly. you don't, don't know, know what they went you don't through. know what they went through and so I, I learned not to even pay attention to that. It's like, okay, focus on what it is that you're doing mm-hmm. and how you're getting yours. That's how you gonna learn from it. How, if if they teaching you something, mm-hmm. learn from it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I remember the it's the little things that count. Like mm-hmm. I remember the first day you came to the gym, I didn't know how to put a lens on. I remember you teaching me like, hey, line up the red dots and yeah, twist yeah, it. It's I the remember little, that. You probably I remember that. that but, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but now every time I put the like, fucking <laughs> lens, yeah, I'm up here like, drugging it like. <laughs> Wait, hold on, bro. Like, like, bro, you gonna break it? Yeah. yeah. But it's the little things, you know what I'm saying? I took that with me, and I never mm-hmm. forget again. Like, mm-hmm. I keep that with me, like every time. Okay, line them up, twist. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But people out here to teach you stuff, people just not learning from it because mm-hmm. they taking it as a joke or they feel like they already better than the next person, so they don't want to listen to that person. But it's the little things. Um, I remember being in my first business meeting with my uh, it was my business partner. Um, Bar Bar and Bailey, you know, uh, we was talking in front of Miss Delia, city of Dallas, and uh, we got out the meeting. He was like, "Hey, bro, uh, one thing I, I just want to tell you, you know, I could have took it another way, but he's like, hey, one thing I want to tell you, you know, when somebody talking, don't cut them off at all. Let them finish their whole sentence, even if they done talking and saying something else. Let them finish first before you get around. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So every time mm-hmm. I'm in a meeting, now, I'm like. Listen to that person. Let them finish talking. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then start. And it just teach you the little things, you know, about life. And it, it teach you how to go a long way, though. If you can carry the little things over, I promise your life will go way much better than, you know, you being a hard head or an asshole. So. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's great advice. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot so, of people <laughs> today don't realize that. They don't. Like, you got to be able to listen and if, like you said, if you listen long enough, you'll find yeah. out a lot about people if you just let them talk. Talk, yeah. Just just tell a whole story because they <laughs> want to tell you talk. how they can oppress you. It's like, mm-hmm. even with females, you know, mm-hmm. you sit down with a female. Let me talk. Oh, son, son, son. Yeah, I paid, you know, son, son, son for these nails. I don't know why. It's like, mm-hmm. all right. You, you like, see where the head is at. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, all right, whatever. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's all good. That's what you expect out of people nowadays. So, mm-hmm. uh, you really just got to find the ones you can roll with and keep rolling with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep that sucker closed. So, and like, like people on people, I, I, I didn't witness four deaths in the last five years. So, wow. So, uh, even people close to you, uh, people just, nah, just, just people. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. people. Uh, my next door neighbors, two young kids, 16, 17, end up killing my, uh, high school class or a middle school classmate right in my alley. Damn. Uh, you know, I, I witnessed that. Uh, another night I had was coming home on 635. Two dudes in the crime bit past me. I was about to race them. Someone told me, mm-hmm. like, chill out. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, man, I'm going to chill tonight. About 30 seconds later, the car flipped. I'm the first one on arrival. And they, they motor on the other side of the highway. That car, the hood is smashed into the concrete, they hood. Wow. They trunk is in the air. So I'm like, oh shit, it's two o'clock in the morning, so it's dark. I get my phone, come my flashlight on. Soon I pull up a dude out the car, leg twisted back, arms, like blood everywhere, body, don't even look like the body it was before. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, um, he DOA. Mm-hmm. So I'm walking to the car, cause I'm like, I see a car seat in the back. 
I'm like, man, I pray to God there ain't no baby in here. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm like looking through the front front windshield. As I look, I cut my flashlight on. It's a dude stuck in the passenger seat, eyes open, looking dead at me. Dead. Mm-hmm. Stuck oh, he, was, in, oh. he was dead. Yeah, stuck in the seatbelt. Just mm-hmm. dead. And I'm like, I was traumatized from it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, damn, how can I get this out of my mind? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Going home, like I just seen two people get killed. Mm-hmm. Then uh second time, uh, I seen a lady jump off the building, probably like 50 feet building downtown, hit concrete, concrete, just plop, sound like a gunshot. That's how loud it was when she hit the ground. Yeah, so I wow. seen that. <laughs> Yeah. And and I know just the other day we you were showing me um, yeah, the about news. the guy on uh-huh. the news so the two you, machete so I everybody guess. know about that yeah <laughs> so, so, so people who don't know about that uh-huh. for the people who don't know about that there was a guy With outside the gym two machetes explain explain that real quick uh it was, it was a guy he was just outside the gym with two machetes you know just slicing and dicing uh, he started hitting cars you know uh, you can tell he was on something at the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, once he got down hitting the cars, he walked up to the gym. That's when we took out Ronnie, tried to catch cover. He went down, started hitting the other buildings with it. Uh, one of my, the next door guy who was on the shops was about to go out there and shoot him if the police didn't come because they knew he was in danger. We got a massage palace down there with ladies and stuff. Mm. So maybe two, one, one or two minutes later, police pulled up. Three shots went off. I'm right there. You know, first shot hit him dead, like in the stomach. Second shot missed. The third shot caught him dead in the head. Boom. He just fell down, started leaking. Wow. So uh, the hard part, you know, when his 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 family came up to me two days later, his son pulled up to the gym. You know, no messages, no call. I'm just outside chilling. Cars roll up on me. And uh, his son, his mom, all let him pull up and was like, hey. You know, we just want to know where he got shot at. We, you know, we heard about it. We seen you on the news. Can you show her, show us where we got killed? Mm-hmm. And that was like one of the hardest situations, showing the son where his father got killed at. Mm-hmm. And just looking at the blood while he right there and seeing the son, it's like, damn, man, you know. Damn. Like, so they didn't even, did they even explain, like, what was he, like, what was, his, what was the deal? I know usually they go into the background. Did they even do any research to find nah, out, they like, were saying what was he somebody he was who, on. yeah, like, did he just lose his job? Like, what made him? Uh, well, I had a Facebook post. Uh, his wife had left him that morning, and uh, she left with the kids, and that's what kind of caused him to go crazy, I guess. But I was like, God, man, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you lose your life over something, Lord, or just, you know, your feelings, just mm-hmm. emotions and feelings. Mm-hmm. That's why I say feel. I feel like feelings is a big word that people don't know about. You know, people overlook because mm-hmm. uh, in life, you know, your feelings and emotions is it's, it's everything. Dude, dude I, I could make I could make a whole new podcast just talking <laughs> about emotions, bro. Because right. it's it's what's going on in politics these days. Is what's going on in every single thing that you see out there. It's it's first geared on emotion, mm-hmm. and that's why we never get anywhere. Exactly. Because you you have to be able to. It's one thing to have emotions; you got to have those in check, but you got to have actual dialogue. You got to ha- be able to kind of set that aside and address the task at hand because it could get in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. you got to know how to use your it's, emotions it's just, because if you don't, it's just gonna block you. It's gonna get in the way of everything that you're doing. It and so, you. yeah, it, it'll it'll hurt you. And all you need is just one one mistake. Mm-hmm. You just one mistake. That's all. It's gonna take you back down to ground one zero. Mistake. So this long ladder you climbing up, mm-hmm. you get your emotions in anyway. Boom, you back mm-hmm. at ground zero. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. It's but true. I, I hope you learn. You know, I hope you learn. Like I say, I tell people. You know, I hope you learn how to control your feelings because I see people who don't even date females. They just you know. Mm-hmm. Talking or females talking to guys, uh, like I said, no relationship, and they see this person talking to someone else and want to do all this crazy stuff and you know cuss them out, and I'm like, bro, you know, mm-hmm. you can't do that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. letting your feelings get involved. Be honest with this person. Mm-hmm. If y'all had an honest relationship, it shouldn't be no problem. You know, if he talking to other people, you talking to other people. Both of y'all should be able to control that as adults and agree on it. Then when y'all meet up. If y'all have a good time, y'all have a good time. Right. You know, if y'all don't know how to control it, then y'all need to cut it off. Boom. Dude, I tell a lot of brothers today, man, you don't realize how much stuff could be avoided if you just be up front. Be up front. You know, just and talk. just be like, look, 
This is where <laughs> I'm at right now. You know, if yeah. you if you want to come along, come along. You yeah. know, if not, it's cool. cool. But I it's understand. like I'm not gonna spend my energy trying to. Trying to hoodwink you, you, and get you, you know, yeah, get you because in. when they when a female motions get involved oh, and she find out, like, wait, what? you was playing me? This nigga was doing this. That he had the That's nerve. When the cars get scratched. That's when all kinds of you know they do all the social media <laughs> nowadays. So they fist to lick all your videos, mm-hmm. pictures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. It's it's just and it could be avoided easily, especially especially if you recognize what you're dealing with. You yeah. know, if you recognize the type of woman you 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 talking to, if she's if she's looking for some service, or maybe if you realize. Like yo, she's somebody who's not serious at all, yeah, and you yeah, trying yeah. to be serious, then you need to know like, all right, well, she's this just, work you know, maybe once, but that I can't be, you know, this can't be my permanent chick, yeah. you know, like so, you got to be able to assess the situation, you know, and and not be in your feelings, like you said, because once they get in their feelings, that's it. Yeah, you can't do the evil for evil, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't. I got a good heart, so when somebody do something evil with me, I'm like, all right, I'll let it go. Even though you know how mad I am, as long as you don't mess with my family mm-hmm. or anything on my business, it's like, all right, I'll let it go because it ain't that serious. You know, money can be made again. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. I, I done, you know, I done been scammed over three thousand dollars with the clothing brand. You know, just <laughs> buying people. You know, saying, oh, I see you shirts, and then end up creating me mockups and not sending me my shirts out, just taking my money. Mm-hmm. Uh, you make you want to kill people because mm-hmm. you know it's your last. Say if it's your last three thousand, how you gonna pay your rent? Mm-hmm. You know them times came for me. It's like how hey, I'm gonna figure it out. But once you figure it out, you like money come and go. I can't. You know I would have mm-hmm. lost my life over money. You know mm-hmm. I would have been locked up over a couple of dollars that I can make again. Mm-hmm. And it's like people don't understand. I I, I understand the respect value of it mm-hmm. that you want people to respect you. But at the end of the day, it's like you gotta be way smarter person, especially if you're on a higher level. Mm-hmm. So. So how far do you, like, what do you envision for your brand going forward? Oh, uh, man, I really want to give it back to the hood, you know, just to get people out, like, create a park, a foundation where I can have events at that park, you know, teach people new workouts, have a basketball court where kids can go play at, uh, you know, and just be they sell, spend that time, you know, because social media is taking up a lot of time now, days. Uh, just give people that old feeling where they can go to a nice park and get a good game of hooping where I got my name legend at. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where it give it create other opportunities. So uh, with the legends. Keep them of, active. Mm-hmm, keep mm-hmm. them active. And uh, with the legends of May, you know, I just kind of want to um, get to the point where I can travel across the world, touching diff- different people to be themselves and, you know, try to work hard every day towards, you know, whatever they going towards. Uh to, to lead that legacy, you know, mm-hmm. no matter what you want to do, if you're a, a doctor, a grocery stalker, uh, if if you're a cowboy, you know, NFL player, whatever mm-hmm. you do, go out there and give it all. Because uh, at the time, I remember when I was working at Coca Cola, I was pulling five hundred pa- uh, five hundred pound pallets at four o'clock in the morning. I have to be clocked in at four thirty. I hated it. But I know if I went in there and gave my all to that job every day, one day I'll start my company, give my all to my own company. And uh, I always teach people there and they're like, man, you know, out that job, they ain't paying enough. It's like, okay, cool, if they ain't paying enough, you still here right now. So go ahead and give it your all till you find something else. Right. Because at the end right. of the day, you cheating yourself. If you do this, what if you got to work, you know, 48 hours straight for your own company? Mm-hmm. You ain't going to want to do that. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I need some, you know, I need some sleep. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm tired. It's like, nah, you got to get it, bro. So everybody is put up to a test. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's what I look at it like. When I hear people say that, I'm like, all right, you ain't meant for it, man. It's cool if you ain't meant for it. Everybody not meant to be. I entre- agree. Everybody I agree. Not meant for, yeah, everybody want to be entrepreneurs, but it's it's not made for everybody. You I, know agree. What I'm so, I agree. I agree. I always tell people that, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not for everybody. And you can try it out. Yeah. Like, try it out. Go ahead. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not stopping anyone from yeah. their dreams. I, but. I, I do. Uh, at the same time, I always suggest to people, like, look, if you're not happy doing whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. um, find out what it is that you are, sh- you know, you mm-hmm. should be doing. There's things that you, you find is it find something you like. You found out early on that you really liked athletics and, yeah. and working out. So the transition into being uh, personal trainer was was something that I'm pretty sure you look back like I was supposed to do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but I feel like everybody has a certain skill, something. Yeah. But they got to develop it. They got to recognize that, you see and they got to have a mindset for mm-hmm. it. A lot of people had a skill already; they just don't have a mindset. So 
the mindset mean they not putting too much time into it every day. You know what I'm saying? They they got other things on their mind. You know, if it's women or men, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. whatever it is, mm-hmm. they mind somewhere else wondering if they thoughts. You know, like what if or what can I do? Some people overthink too hard about life. It's like just calm down, chill, wake up, and do what you need to do every day. You know, eat, eat a good breakfast. Uh, Get on the internet, do some more researching, you know, reach out mm-hmm. to people, go to a couple of events to meet the new people, see what they do. Uh, it's plenty of ways to get it, man. Everybody out here, you know, uh, I wouldn't say friendly, but it's a lot of people out here trying to help other people mm-hmm. grow. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, like you find them people, then you definitely start succeeding because it, like I say, it take you to another lifestyle. How I went from Dallas to Arlington. And it's showing me that everybody ain't hood. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's good people out here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So a lot of people just stuck where they at. But you realize how big the world is. And you're like, oh, yeah. shit, if somebody love me. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, somebody going to love me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't have, I didn't have people try to pay me $1,000 an hour, you know, just for a job. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't have people gave me 500 right there just to talk to me for five minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy once you start getting that because you're like, damn, I just made 500 in five minutes mm-hmm. just from talking to this person. And this happened to me real life. This, mm-hmm. I'm speaking facts. Like, mm-hmm. I promise. Like, somebody, hey, man, can I talk to you five minutes? $500 right there gave it to me. I'm like, Because damn. that information that they got from you they gonna, it's going to be, be worth more yeah, to them yeah. than $500. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so, you know, people know the price of it, but. You know, you, you got to know the value of yourself. It's people, I, you know, I didn't ask him for 500. He, he he pretty much offered it to me, you know what I'm saying? So it's a, uh, it show you different ways. Like, okay, it is out here. It is. My, I can make $2,000 in one week, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Instead of working a nine to five and getting paid $400, in that, uh, you know, $400 a week, you know, it teach you like, why well, this person that worked eight hours a day, I just made 500 in one hour. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They, they wouldn't even believe if I did this. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, how you make 500 in one hour? Mm-hmm. You, you know, you got tattoos on your neck and stuff. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like it's the mindset, baby. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. the hustle to the ground. So mm-hmm. it's, it's it's all into it, man. That's why, I, like, I don't feed into the materialistic stuff, the social media stuff. Uh, I done reached out to plenty of people like, hey, you know, you want to shoot? You want they look at me as nobody. I'm like, cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep moving forward. Keep it moving. Keep yeah, doing your thing. At the, end of the yeah. day, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm just trying to help each other. But mm-hmm. if you're not, you know, if you're not down to be with me, then that's cool. I have no problem with that. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. that's your choice. I'm going to keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't wish nobody nothing bad or anything. It's just I'm focused on myself. When you right. focus on yourself, you can't go wrong. Exactly. I don't care what you do at the end of the day. It's all about me. You know what I'm saying? I'm put. You can say I'm selfish, whatever, but at the end of the day, I got to make sure my mindset right because these devils try to come in and, you know, distract you and get mm-hmm. you out of track. So mm-hmm. it's, it's it's way different, man, especially, like I say, from the, the struggle I've been through, you know, pretty much being robbed at one point, mm-hmm. you know, having an AK to my head and a shotgun to my chest. It's like the story is like, man, I ain't even supposed to be here living. So mm-hmm. what I got to lose? Mm-hmm. I'm waking up every day, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much doing what you want to do. Doing what I want to do, what, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm a, <laughs> I'm pretty much a, a dead body walking mm-hmm, right mm-hmm, now because mm-hmm. all, you know, all the stuff I've been through from being on a boat and having a boat sunk and not knowing how to swim and, uh, you know, being six feet. How old was the, how old were you when that happened? Uh, this happened two years ago. I had a picture on my Instagram where we pulling the boat up at the lake. It's like 50 feet under. Which yeah. lake? Uh, lake Ray Hubbard. Yeah, Lake Ray Hubbard what? by the gym. <laughs> so, yeah, we was on a boat, probably about 14 of us, and uh, they was going weight boarding. My friend who was driving the boat ended up turning around. He hit it too hard. Water came up and took over the boat. It happened so quick. We was chilling. They're like, hey, water coming in. It's feeling good at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, we in the water, so we ain't thinking nothing serious. So, we see water getting higher and higher on the boat. It's like the Titanic, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a big boat at mm-hmm. all, uh, but the boat just kind of flipped down. It went straight down. And I'm thinking like a black person. I'm like, oh, the boat going to hit something at the bottom. I'm mm-hmm. just at the top, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sit and wait for somebody to come rescue me. So <laughs> the boat going <laughs> under, under more, probably like this the this the end of the boat, this the water. So the boat just going under, under more. And uh, it's me and the white girl left out of 14 people. I'm like, 
one of us got to be on the top. So I just pushed her towards my homeboy. I didn't know she knew how to swim. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to be the one at the top. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> shit, I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody telling me, like, jump. Jump, Alex, jump. I'm like, man, I can't swim. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be my day. So the boat, once my feet touched the water, I realized, oh, shit, this whole boat under the water. Mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck. So I had, they was telling me to jump because, uh, like, the hooks and stuff on the boat could have easily caught on to me and dragged me down. Oh, so okay. that's why they was telling me to jump. Mm-hmm. So uh, once I jumped in the water, I, I felt like I jumped in the wrong spot, like where the boat was at. Mm-hmm. So it created a deep hole where I was going right there by the boat, you know, how I was sucking everything in. And, uh, man, at the time, it's, I was under the water. I was just fighting the water, I remember. And uh, I was probably, I felt probably five feet, six feet underwater. And uh, when I was under the water, I was just swinging, trying to kiss. And I was like, man, this can't be it for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I heard a voice say, I got you. And as I heard that voice, I grabbed something and gripped it. I didn't know what it was. It was the tightest grip ever. You know what I'm saying? I remember. I I, I did not let go. And uh, I was like, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. get me, pull me mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Get me. I can't mm-hmm. breathe. And, uh, man, I started breathing for air like, I couldn't believe, and I was like, <gasps> I couldn't see because mm-hmm. I couldn't open my eyes on the water. I didn't know how to swim my eyes open or anything like mm-hmm. that. Uh, once I opened my eyes above water, I had caught a life jacket. A life jacket was in my right hand. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I guess the life jacket was coming from under the boat, mm-hmm. and I just happened to time it at the perfect time and mm-hmm. caught it, and it brought me back up. And wow. Uh, man, it was the hardest workout. Like, we had to swim to the bridge. So, it wasn't no shore or anything like that. We had to swim. Probably at least, I can't even remember, man, but it was a far-ass swim. and <laughs> it was so, At one point, I stopped in the lake. I was like, man, this might be the end of it for me because mm-hmm. I'm tired. It's the hardest work. My own burning. Mm-hmm. But if I ain't had that fitness mentality, like push through your workout, push through your sit, I probably would have gave up because, man, it was, it was a wow. dream. Yeah, so. Man, man, thank God you, you, you pulled through, man. Yeah, yeah. So I'm here. I'm still here this day. That's why when people. He's when, here for a reason. <laughs> That's that's the thing. You here for a reason, man. Yeah, I'm like, man, I ain't had plenty of times to be gone. So I'm like, shit, why fear life? I can't fear life, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just got to keep, it teach you how to keep yeah, living. It is. I agree. Yeah. I so. agree. Now, like, now, you know, you got to go get some, some uh, swimming lessons oh, now. Oh, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Case. Hey, I've been swimming this whole, <laughs> I went with my nephew. He like, you don't mm-hmm. know how to swim. I'm like, hey. Better go the, learn <laughs> for situations like that. You can at least keep your uh, head above the water or something. This is my first time getting back into the water this year. Ever since then. Mm-hmm. I went to like a four feet pool where I can stand up in. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but ever since then, I was like, man, no more lakes, no more water for me. Mm-hmm. So, that was crazy, though. Traumatizing, man. I, oh, I yeah. hear you, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. lost our phone, car keys, everything underwater, mm-hmm. money, <laughs> iPad, Damn, camera. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure yeah, in the moment, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, like, at the moment, I'm like, shit, I'm breathing. All that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I can get all that again. Mm-hmm. Shit, at the time, shit, it took me probably about three or four months, but I got it all back. So mm-hmm. it's like, can't I go crazy you. over materialistic stuff. I feel you, man. Yeah, so. Dude, oh man, I appreciate you coming on here, man. Oh, uh, man. I appreciate was, you. This was good combo, man. We we went on uh, almost an hour and a half, man. We, <laughs> Don't we did even good. feel like uh, nah, not yeah, at all. Dang, five o'clock. Uh, hey, yeah. before before we wrap up, man, tell me just for the audience, man, where can we find you know your clothes? Where can we find you, the gym, uh, all of that? The compound gym is located in Guala, Texas, it's right off of Thirty and Bass Pro. It's uh. If you're going towards Rockwall, it's on the left-hand side. Uh, most of the time, I'll be there because uh, I'm my story up there also. So I'm pretty much up there. If you catch me, come on, you know, come in, speak to me, talk to me. Uh, that's my place of business. So you can come up there and talk business with me. Anybody. Uh, social network. Social. Uh, yeah, social network. Uh, my website for the ledgers of May is lambforever.com. Uh, L-A-M forever.com. Uh, social media life of legend my main page i do have a training page just all training videos legend train underscore and then i have the uh the gym page the compound gym tx and also the clothing brand page legends are made so it's all four of them on instagram then facebook facebook you can find me at alex williams or the clothing brand page legends are made uh Definitely yes. follow this brother, man. Uh, the clothes look good. I'm picking up a shirt today. Um, 
thank you, thank you again, man, for coming yeah. on here, man. Definitely appreciate you, brother. I, I truly appreciate you for having me. You know, letting people know my story. So a lot of people don't know I'm very private. So mm-hmm. this is gonna be the first time a lot of people heard it. You know, heard heard all this and be like, my my close friends gonna be like, yeah, you know, he's speaking real. This all this shit happened to him, but people who just know about my fitness life, you know. Don't know about the man behind the yeah, behind the I legend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the story, the, yeah. So now I appreciate you sharing it, man, because um, that's what we need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, we all have a story to tell, man. You told your story today. Um, and I, I appreciate you. Nah, I appreciate you again, man. So I had a good time coming in. Feel for anything, baby. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It's signing off, y'all. All right, peace. <laughs>